This video was a request someone had made and that was how would you go after MRAPs? This particular person is very concerned because he lives near railroad tracks and he sees large shipments of MRAPs on a regular basis on the railhead. Now first off that's gonna happen and I personally am not worried when I see that. It is far more economical for the military to transport large numbers of new vehicles or repaired vehicles or returning vehicles from overseas by railhead. It's a lot cheaper than driving them down the road or transporting them on the back of low boys or semi trucks with uh, low uh, equipment hauling trailers. But it still comes down to how could we or should we engage MRAPs. I'm not going to give you a specific like you attack this particular MRAP in this way because this is the weak spot. Because quite frankly I don't know. I can give you some things to look for to consider and that's about it. Now I have here five different types of MRAPs. Two of the pictures are the same type of MRAP. Mine resistant ambush protected vehicles. First off here we have two of the same vehicle. These are South African made RG31s. This particular one is set up for convoy security configuration armed with a 50 caliber and it has an antenna on here for defeating or at least interfering with radio signals going to IEDs. I don't know particularly which uh, counter IED system would be inside this vehicle. I know some people can tell by the antennas I really can't. I know they kept changing the systems out every few months in Iraq so I just stop trying to learn the names of all of them. This particular RG31, same as this one, I believe are Mark 5s. And you can tell that by these little black metal discs on the windows. Those are for putting barrels of weapons through so that the people inside can fight out. This particular M RG31 this is the engineer version. On the front here is a giant leaf blower. This is called a cyclone. This nozzle can be rotated to the sides to direct uh, <coughs> to direct a lot of uh, wind or air into its potential target. This was designed to uncover IEDs that were hidden by sand or to blow trash out of the way. This little tower back here is the armor that shields a camera system. The camera, when you see it, is a lot similar to what's on the front of Apache gunships. The uh, vehicle cannot move at speed when the camera is deployed outside the armor. <coughs> and I don't remember the uh, max speed at that point. This one is set up for a 50 caliber, which is not currently in the mount. And this around the outside of the turret ring is camouflage netting, possibly some uh, chicken wire underneath. This is to prevent people from dropping in pipe bombs and grenades from off of overpasses or from the tops of buildings, which was a problem that they encountered in Iraq. The insurgents figured out that that was an effective way to take out the RGs. This particular one over here I believe is US made. That is a Cougar. This started coming out later in the Iraq war as a uh, improved RG so to say 
you can see it's US lineage when you look at it because it looks like one of our five tons except lower to the ground <coughs> and it has a turret station up on top for heavy weapons now one way that I've tried to tell the difference on the MRAPs is the grills if you can see the front of this on the RG it's sloped downward it's a four wheel and it's got this smaller grill on front that's kind of recessed on the Cougar here it looks more like a cargo truck with a grill similar to what you might see on a uh, old half track from World War II except it's vertical instead of slanted and the tires are clearly US manufactured this is similar to what you see on uh, five ton trucks there is supposed to be a four wheeled version of the Cougar I came across that when I was uh, looking up pictures these two down here are Russian MRAPs developed under uh, I guess what the Russians started was called a uh, typhoon program or was the name for the program please forgive me I am sick right now <coughs> this first one is the Ural design this particular model it they came up with the Ural company came up with as a base platform for transports so this could have a uh, box on back for transporting troops or transporting supplies transporting fuel mounting an anti-aircraft weapon on back whatever this particular one was made by gaz gaz this is an armored personnel carrier both of these have been sighted in syria this last one over here this is a chinese made cs dash vp3 now if you look at this this really stood out to me see this grill on front this kind of pentagon shaped grill and the general shape of the vehicle it almost looks like a BTR 152 except it only has four wheels this particular MRAP I guess has been seen more and more in Africa but used by Chinese troops and also sold to African nations because a lot of African nations don't like the South Africans so they won't buy their stuff the Russians are too busy supplying their own troops supplying the Syrians to send them stuff the US we're too busy sending it out to our allies and making it for ourselves. so the Chinese are kind of filling a niche in the market with sending out their copies now common features that you'll see on MRAPs one is ground clearance it's obvious on here and on here these are very high off the ground there's usually a, at least two foot of clearance from what i've seen when i've been up cl close on m wraps this one is two most likely but it's kind of concealed by these storage boxes that's what these are too on the sides of the rg now another common thing on m wraps is they have v-shaped holes you can kind of see it here here and see it right here here and it's hard to tell on the RG because of the storage boxes but it is a v-shaped hull also now the reason for that if a landmine <coughs> or a moderate sized IED were to go off underneath the vehicle first off you have separation from the device in the ground so that explosive force has more distance to travel and when it does reach the bottom of the vehicle the v-shaped hull will direct the blast forces away from the vehicle 
Another common feature with M wraps is they are designed to get blown up and get repaired fairly quickly. Not as quickly as, say, a Husky, but they're designed to be hauled back to base and then, you know, the axle pulled off and replaced pretty quick, or replace the engine, replace the hood, and so forth. And even the uh, glass is bolted in and they just got to pop out a couple bolts replace the bulletproof glass and then put the bracket or a new bracket on to put it right back in its place <coughs> now for how you can damage m wraps possibly destroy them it's extremely hard because these vehicles are designed to take a lot of damage and protect the crew inside. That's the main feature of an MRAP there is crew protection. You can see the armored cabs and all that. And the armored glass. Now, if you use an IED and it goes off underneath the vehicle, it's going to have to be pretty big. It's going to have to be a couple hundred pounds or more. I have heard a story of... A cougar getting taken out in Iraq where the insurgents had planted a 300 pound IED in the road and it was just explosives there was no metal in it so that's why the husky did not pick it up well when the cougar came over the top of the IED they set it off that 300 pounds literally ripped the axles off lifted the vehicle a good 20 feet in the air, slammed it down on the ground, and everyone inside was killed. It did rip the armor apart in back, under, right above where the IED went off. Now, that's not really economical because of the amount of explosives required, a few hundred pounds. <coughs> Something that would be uh, easier or more economical you have to target the crew areas. Heavy machine gun fire of at least 50 caliber or 12.7 millimeter firing armor piercing will damage the glass and after a couple rounds should punch its way through. It might do it on the armor itself too, but that I'm not too sure on. Another way to take them out would be RPGs or recoilless rifles. Your main target that you should aim for first would be the glass. Because that would be easier to breach than the metal on the doors. Another um, pretty much guaranteed way that I've always heard for taking out MRAPs is EFPs, Explosively Formed Projectiles. If you don't know what those are, look them up. I highly recommend if you're a militia engineer, learn how to make them. Read everything you can on them. There are videos on them where people tested them out to show people in the news, you know, how destructive they are and that type of stuff. They are very easy to make and it doesn't require a lot of materials. But what an EFP does, it fires a molten slug of metal into the target. Well, to take out an MRAP with an EFP, it should come in directly from the side. It must come in directly perpendicular to the target. If it is aimed at the ground, at the V-shaped hull, it's very likely it'll hit the hull glance off right down into the ground but if you angle it upward at the hull it should punch its way through I do know of a uh, <coughs> buffalo which is another South African MRAP that's used by engineers on route clearance I do know of at least one that was breached by an EFP. The vehicle survived. It was patched up and brought to the United States and uh, shown the troops <coughs> to show them that uh, 
what could happen and um, they explained what happened how the uh, armor was breached the crew did survive no one was uh, injured because the EFP was not powerful enough and it was a little bit too far away from the vehicle but it was close enough that it did punch through the uh, v-shaped hull <coughs> now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movement always remember Essayons.